We particularly welcome Pat's immediate family, his wife Bridie, and his daughters Mary Frances, Noreen and Patricia, son-in-law Andy, and Pat's grandchildren Stephen, Nicky and Andrew, Pat's brother Huey, uh, Pat's sisters-in-law Mary and Nora, all his nieces, nephews and cousins, extended family, neighbours and friends, on behalf also of Father Joe Macaulay and the parishioners of St Brendan's, we offer our condolences to the family. Your loss to Bridie and the family. And in our Mass today, we also remember Pat and Bridie's son, and brother to his sisters, Danny, who died on the 11th of February 2019. We welcome those of you who are joining us through stream, through the goodness of Sancta Familia, especially Huey. Pat's brother and family in Ireland. We warmly welcome those who have travelled a long distance to be with us today. It's most appreciated, and those who are not of our faith. We hope that you'll be able to pray for with us for the happy and peace and repose of the soul of Pat in our Mass, and also the comfort and consolation of Bridie and the family in the loss. I ask you please to stand for our entrance hymn. together, the, the Father and the, the, Holy Spirit. the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. 
We gather today with the family and around the Lord's altar to celebrate, to give thanks and to remember Pat in our love. We do so as a family of God, a people committed who firmly believe in the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. And in our Mass today, we ask the risen Lord to give us comfort and consolation as we listen to his holy word, to nourish and strengthen us in Eucharist and in sacrament as we entrust part in the eternal embrace and love of God our loving Father. To prepare ourselves to celebrate our Mass together, to listen to the word of God and share the Eucharist, let us call to mind our sin. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sin, and bring us to life everlasting. And now let us pray. O God, Father Almighty, our faith professes that your Son, Jesus, died and rose again. Mercifully grant that through this mystery, your servant, our brother in Christ and friend Pat, who has fallen asleep in Christ, may rejoice to rise again through him, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God for ever and ever. I'd like to sit down, please. Our readings today are read for us by Delia and Maeve. reading from the prophet Isaiah. On this mountain, the Lord of hosts will prepare for all peoples a banquet of rich food. On this mountain, he will remove the mourning veil covering all peoples, and the shroud enwrapping all nations, he will destroy death forever. The Lord will wipe away the tears from every cheek. He will take away his people's shame everywhere on earth. For the Lord has said so. That day it will be said, See, this is our God in whom we hoped for salvation. The Lord is the one in whom we hoped. We exult and we rejoice that he has saved us. The word of the Lord.
reading from the book of the Apocalypse. John heard a voice from heaven say to me, Write down, happy are those who die in the Lord. Happy indeed, the Spirit says. Now they can rest forever after their work, since their good deeds go with them. The word of the Lord. from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to his disciples, Now the hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. I tell you most solemnly, unless a wheat grain falls on the ground and dies, it remains only a single grain. But if it dies, it yields a rich harvest. Anyone who loves his life loses it. Anyone who hates his life in this world will keep it for the eternal life. If a man serves me, he must follow me. Wherever I am, my servants will be there too. If anyone serves me, my Father will honour him. The Gospel of the Lord. Pat and Bridie were introduced to one another by a friend when they both attended an agricultural fair. Friday, I'm told, noticed Pat across the field and thought how very handsome and kindly he looked and was. They were formally to be introduced much later at a dance and did in fact dance together all night long. Pat and Friday began to write to each other to keep in touch when Pat left home to work in England. Friday herself was moving from Ireland to Scotland, but eventually came to live here in Scotland and Pat and Bridie were married in the Sacred Heart Parish Church in Derry Beg in County Donegal on the 31st of July 1956, a marriage which lasted 66 years to Pat's death on the 18th of February last month. May he rest in peace. Amen. In certain parts of Ireland, and indeed here across the United Kingdom, a word that's very seldom used is the term or word autumn. Instead, people refer to the August to October period as a time of harvest. There is certainly an air of fullness and completion about that particular time of the year, an atmosphere which the poet Keats himself described with the phrase, miss and mellow faithfulness, fruitfulness. 
And today we come together to celebrate the funeral mass of Pat in this atmosphere of mellowness, fruitfulness, fullness and completion. We have come together to the church to give thanks to God for a long life, 97 years, a life well lived, a life which has been filled with the fruits of the Holy Spirit himself, with love and joy, with peace and patience, with kindness, faithfulness and gentleness, the harvest of a life well and truly lived. Death is sometimes described in literature or depicted in art form as the Grim Reaper, a kind of skeletal figure that comes with a very sharp scythe to mow us down. But that's not how the Christian faith sees death. Our Christian vision is much better expressed, I think, in the well-known Irish poem, which tells us that Christ is the seed and Christ is the harvest. May we all be gathered into God's barn. And Christ himself sowed the seed of eternal life many years ago in Pat, when he was brought by his mum and dad as an infant to the church where he was baptised, where he was christened, his first and greatest bonding in union with Christ. And in the many years that were to pass since then, Christ has tended that particular seed in Pat as it grew. He nourished the tender seeds of Pat's young Christian life in his first confession, his first Holy Communion, when Pat was confirmed. Christ saw that seed into full bloom in Pat's adult life, in his marriage of 66 years to Bridie, and the rearing of his family, his children, his son Danny, sadly now deceased, his daughters Mary Frances, Noreen and Patricia. And Christ saw the growth of that seed into a ripe old age. And now in the fullness of God's time, Christ has gathered to himself the very rich abundant harvest of a long, a faithful and a fruitful life. No matter how long anyone's life is, there is still a deep sadness in death particularly for those who bid a personal farewell, even temporary, to a dearly loved husband and daddy, to a grandfather, a brother, a good neighbour, a cherished friend, a faithful parishioners to both St Ninian's and St Brendan's parishes. But our faith makes us very hopeful today as we look forward to a time when in fact God's harvesting will be complete and we will be gathered together with him, with Pat, with Danny and everyone we have loved to be happy forever in the kingdom of God's eternal peace and joy. <clears throat> Eternal rest grant unto him, O Lord, and let perpetual light shine upon him. May he rest in peace. May his soul and the souls of all the faithful departed, through the mercy of God, rest in peace. Amen. I ask you please to stand. Dear sisters and brothers, our human life has been transformed by the gift of Jesus. By his dying and rising we are set free, that we too may enter into the fullness of our calling. We pray for Pat, that he, en he enlivened our lives together. May Christ heal whatever sin has broken and bring him into eternal life. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for Pat's family, who keenly feel the pain of separation. May the crucified Christ, who also felt the power of death, comfort them in his love. Lord, in your mercy. And we pray for ourselves as a community, 
May our gentle Christ give us the grace to hold our memories close and then let go, that Pat may complete his journey into the arms of our loving Saviour. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all who need our support. May the comforting power of Christ help us to strengthen the faith of those who find it difficult to believe. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We take a wee moment to pray for our parents, our family members living in debt. We thank God for what they have done for us in the past and continue to do for us in the present. Lord, hear us. We pray today for peace in our hearts, for peace at home and in our relationships. We pray for peace in our troubled world and particularly for the peoples of Ukraine. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now, and at the hour of our death. Amen. Our Lady of Fatima, Our Lady, Queen of Peace, let us pray. <clears throat> May Christ, who enters fully into our human story, listen to the prayers of a broken people, and intercede for all of us to our Heavenly Father. We ask this in his name. Amen. If you'd like to sit down, please. We now move on to the second part and stage of our Mass, the Liturgy of the Eucharist. We have completed the first part of our Mass, the Liturgy of the Word, where the Lord has come among us into our hearts to give us consolation, peace and comfort. He now nourishes and strengthens us by himself as the living bread of life. And the family, Louise and Shona, will bring up our offertory gift. Sacrifice today may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. As we humbly present these sacrificial offerings, O Lord, 
for the salvation of parts. We beseech your mercy that he who did not love your son to be a loving Savior, we find him in the merciful God, who lives and reigns forever and ever. The Lord be with you. Lift up your heart. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just in our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. In him the hope of blessed resurrection has dawned, that those saddened by the certainty of dying may be consoled by the promise of immortality to come. Indeed, for your faithful Lord, life is changed, not ended, and when this earthly dwelling turns to dust, an eternal dwelling is made ready for them in heaven. And so with angels and dark abominations, with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. rightly gives you praise. Lord Jesus Christ, by the power of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, your sacrifice may be to your Therefore, Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration that they may become the body and blood of your Son, the Lord Jesus Christ, whose command we celebrate in this place. For in the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he broke the blessing, he broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, the supper was ended. Giving you thanks, he said a blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for me, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in the name of As we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, we become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, 
St. Brendan and St. Ninian and St. Coleman, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church here on earth, your servants, Francis our Pope, William our Bishop, our priests or deacons and our religious, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Look graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. Remember, Pat, whom you have called from this day, from this world to yourself. Grant that he who was united with your son in a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection. To our departed brothers and sisters too, and to all who were, pleased, who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory when you will wipe away every tear from our eyes. For seeing you, our God, as you are, we shall be like you, and for all ages, praise you without end. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours forever and ever. And together let us pray for the coming spread and growth of God's kingdom into the world and through our own lives. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. Thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin, safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not in our sins, but in the faith of your Church, and graciously grant us peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign for ever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. This is Jesus, the resurrection and the life, whose body we receive today in grateful memory of our brother in Christ, our friend Pat, and in the hope of our own resurrection. We are happy to be called to this supper. Lord, I am not worthy you should enter under my roof, but only say the word in my soul shall be healed.
If you're coming to Holy Communion today, coming forward to receive the Lord's blessing, we ask that we begin our communion procession from the front benches of the church and work our way down. We ask that you keep a safe distance between yourself and the person in front and behind you.
Lord will open to them the gate of paradise. They will return to that homeland where there is no death, but only everlasting life. Let us pray. Lord God, whose Son left us in the sacrament of his body, food for the journey, mercifully grant that strengthened by it, our brother and friend Pat may come to the eternal table of Christ, who lives and reigns for ever and ever. Dear sisters and brothers, dear friends, before we part, let us take leave of Pat. May this last farewell express the depth of our love for him, ease our sadness and strengthen our hope. When Pat was baptised, he was baptised into the death of Christ. God our Father has raised the Lord Jesus from the dead, and we too have been raised in him to live a new life for God. Through our baptism, we have shared in the death of Jesus in order that we may also share in his resurrection. And so in memory of our baptism, we now use our holy water and call in the Lord Jesus to welcome Pat into the glory of eternal life. As a mark of respect for Pat who when baptized, his body became a temple of the Holy Spirit. It is with dignity we incense his remains. Our incense today also adds dignity to the prayers which all of us have offered up during our Mass today, rising to God our Father on Pat's behalf. <laughs> One day we will greet Pat with joy, with the love of Christ which overcomes all things, will destroy even death itself. Into your hands, Father of mercies, we commend our brother Pat, in the sure and certain hope that together with all who have died in Christ, Pat will rise with him on the last day. We give you thanks for the blessings you bestowed upon Pat in this life. They are signs to us of your goodness and of our fellowship with the saints in Christ. Merciful Lord, turn towards us and listen to our prayer. Open the gates of paradise to your servant and help us who remain 
to comfort each other with assurances of our faith. Until we all meet in Christ and are with you and part forever, we ask this through Christ our Lord. Just before recessional hymn today, we wish to take this opportunity of extending sincere thanks to everyone who has helped and those who have organised and taken part in our liturgy today. We thank our parish ministers. We thank also our funeral directors, Tina O'Brien, for a very dignified, caring and efficient service to Pat, to Bridie and to the family. We thank Father Canon Joe Macaulay and the parishioners of St Brendan's and Yoker for their support and their prayers and their presence. <laughs> 